Okay, we are in Paraka, Syria of the Timur Dvara, and we're talking about, let me just refresh your memory, we're talking about um, that the ultimate in reaching Kedusha, it's a hard part, it's a hard part because it's, we're talking about Kedusha, Kedusha is, it's hard to put your figure, it's up to a chesed, to a, this, I mean, Kedusha, that's like your whole essence, that's what, it, that's what we are. Trying to reach Kedusha, and the way to reach Kedusha, he explained to us last week, is to be makasha yourself with the spheros. Makasha yourself with the spheros, the best way to do that, he explains, which is, a, at least to me, a new um, idea, that um, the, the day, the 24-hour cycle, is divided up into spheros. Um, night, we learned last time, is malchus. Sleeping time is malchus. Uh, Malthus, we can understand Malthus means that you're, you're, um, <coughs> you're almost dead when you're sleeping. Um, so it, there's, you're, like, there's not, you're, not, you're not in it for yourself. I think I explained last time my, my uh, muscle, which I think is a good one, so I'll repeat it. <laughs> and, like, we always know that when you're... Um, that we're bound in this world by the boundaries of time. There's man in this world. Um, in the Hashem's world, so to speak, there's no time, right? So it's hard. It's one of one of those things hard to wrap your brain around because we don't have any experience of life without time. But we have to understand that time is a bria. Time is a bria, like like trees are a bria, like we're a bria, like Yom Belayla is a bria. So t Yom Belayla is a bria. <laughs> you know, the, the time is a bria. Just it's hard to understand. In any case, to, we can understand a world without trees, but it's hard to understand a world without time, or the boundaries of time. How do you understand it? Yet, the, the, even the Rambam, I say even the Rambam, not a Makubal, like, like, even the Rambam um, is adamant that we understand that Zman is a Bria. He speaks about it in a few different places. Time itself is a, a Bria. What is... I think, but, but, uh, Rabbi Stroll already pointed out to me, I spoke a couple of weeks ago in Shul about Kiddush and uh, on that the Gemara says, Ki hi chachmaschem u binaschem the way that, the, 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 how, how we Jews um, uh, thought about and understood, even before the ancient uh, astronomers, uh, the exact cycles of the moon around the earth and, and, uh, and the, and the uh, earth around the sun, etc. The way, the way we understood this, the, these things, even what we misunderstood, <laughs> In, in terms of uh, in terms of cycles, like like you have to really watch something for a thousand years in order to be able to understand the the cycles of it. But Shmuel uh, pointed out that that, uh, that probably um, the he these days is not even about kiddush hakodesh, but uh, about um, Einstein's physics, because. Because uh, in theory, with the equation, he was able to tell us that Mercury revolves around the solar system 47 seconds a year. Uh, it was Einstein did with a calculation, and, and this uh, Aga is uh, this is called Jewish science. The, the Nazis, the Maximum Vizitrum, would not recognize it, and like Einstein, they, they, they were they wouldn't recognize what they called Jewish physics. Not. I'm, uh, sure because he was a Jew, but that wasn't the point. The Einsteinian physics as opposed to Newtonian physics, neither of which am I any kind of a Buckian, but I went to high school. But uh, Einsteinian uh, physics is all um, theoretical, meaning uh, if an equation, if, if, if this is this, it's an equation, if this is this equals this, so then automatically we can assume that. So uh, Deductive the, reasoning. Right, so deductive reasoning, whereas um, the, the German physics was always we have to do an experiment. We have to actually see it in front of our eyes. Most of those experiments, experiments on Jews, unfortunately. But uh, it was it was it was a um, what you see and what what could be. So that's that's called the, the world of science. That's called Jewish science, Jewish physics, that, that we can work with theory. But uh, it was it was Shemaim that they didn't uh, hold of this uh, the Nazis because otherwise they could have gotten the bomb. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, uh, the, the, so the kihi chachmaschem upi naschem. The vidaschem is, is the extrapolation that we can do one thing to another and to say if this, if this is moving this much and that's moving that much and this is relative to that, so we can assume this is moving this much and that much. I, mean, I, I read the biography of Einstein when he, when he understood the movement of Mercury, planet Mercury, he started to cry. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like such a moment of, uh, of hysteria for him, you know. So it's, uh, okay, he also went to Cheder, I doubt that's where he learned it. He, Chachmas, and Benaskam. In any case, what I, what I wanted to bring out, what I, I think I said last time, is that you see a good marshal to, um, to this is that a person could go to sleep at night. So we're talking about here, you can go to sleep at night and you could have a dream. And in the dream, um, uh, half an hour could pass, two hours could pass, ten years, three generations, <laughs> everything could happen. Three generations could go on in my dream. Wow, this one, now I saw my grandfather, I saw my grandson, this and, that. and then you wake up and um, you, you, your wife tells you, yeah, you were sleeping for five minutes. So <laughs> how could it be in five minutes three generations go by? Because when we're sleeping, um, our neshama is mispashed from the goof and it goes, lamala min azman. And once it goes lamala min azman, so that there is no zman. There's no zman. So in this world, three minutes pass, two minutes or ten seconds even. There's a, how long is a dream? You know, a dream seems like it went out all night long. It was a, it's a couple seconds, they say. So, so a couple of seconds, you can see the, 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 the world without zman. So I, I, I think, I mean, just, I, I've never seen that in the saver, but I think that's as close as we can get to a world without Zman, and the reason is because as long as we're alive, that's as close as we can get to, to, to Misa. And a Misa is a world without is a world without Zman. There's no Zman in Shemayim. But as long as we're in this world, um, so 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 therefore a world without Zman, which is the world of sleep at night, is a world of Malchus. Uh, um, it's a world of Malchus because we're totally in passive mode. We're in um, Macabell mode. Uh, it's a lay slay me garme klum mode. That's that's what's happening when we're sleeping. Our, it's, it's, it's malchus. My neshama is taken from me and it stands in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ladin. If I'm a tzaddik, by the way, that doesn't happen to Roshayim. It only happens to tzaddikim. So, uh, by, by the Shabbat, we, we get up in the morning, Moidani lefanecha, shechzarta binishmasi. And you see, Uvta, Roshayim, don't say that. Shechzarta binishmasi bechem lo rabba emonosecha. So, so that's that's what we were learning until now. Now, next step of our, um, our our program in the evening is come to Chatzay Salaylo. We should get up in the middle at Chatzay Salaylo midnight. You told Yadav me a clip after you left the You watched Nago Vaser, and you were you were um, you were dead, right? So if you're Achim Mishish and Mimisa, so now. Um, you have to wash Negovas here. Why do we, what's, what's the Klipas Halayla? That when, when you have, I just let me just explain that when you're alive, so you have, your neshama is with you. And your neshama, it's a force field, protects you from chitzonim. And when you're sleeping, you're not protected. Your neshama is not with you as much as it was. You're not as protected, so the chitzonim can can um, the chitzonim can can attack whatever that means. Penetrate. And therefore, um, there's a certain tuma there. It's like a tumas misa that we have when a person um, when a person wakes up in the morning. You have to wash nagovaser from that klipa. Yavir ra mipsarai. You were you were for in other words to put it simply, while you're sleeping, to some extent you were a goof without a neshama. Right, and we wake up and we say, "Lakai neshama shenasata vita ariyah tabrasata yitzartas in a bura." But but without the neshama, so um, so we're a nefesh without a neshama, and there's no protection from the chitzonim, and therefore there's a din misa. V'yivarech v'yisakin ashchina be'esa katera. So we get up at midnight, and we we uh, make a, we wash nagavaser and we make a bracha. The bracha that you make, what bracha do you make? V'yivarech what? You get up at midnight, you wash the glass, you go to Yavari. What brach are you make? Hmm? Okay. <laughs> so the, the, if you look up the Zayar inside, which I did, it's a Zayar Parshish Braces. Yavari Adam says, um, when you get up at Chatzai, Yavari Adam Bir You should make your brach chais. Vehem chai brach Except for the Zayar says the only bracha you can't make is birchas hatarnikol. But you're getting dressed and you're you're seeing and you're all the things that it says there in birchas hashachar are, are, are true. Except for the the tarnikol. The tarnikol is for the simpletons that get up at five. Sleepy, <laughs> sleepyheads. Right. 
the sleepy heads, right? <laughs> but uh, but for for us, so um, I got it's an interesting thing how um, uh, it just generally fascinates me uh, how we don't keep the tire. <laughs> I was fascinated by that. Like, like on the one hand, there was a makpid on pasakva, but chalavakva, and things like that. But it's this. This is a gibar. It's not just a rabak. It's a gibar that says you're supposed to get up at chazay salayla. David Abelach got up at chazay salayla. The shocharach brings it. I think it's a begimel, a bedal, right? The shocharach brings it. David Abelach, shocharach says, David Abelach, how you come at chazay salayla? So, um, I mean, I can, I can explain why we lost that one, but but it's just so interesting to me how. Um, how we're so machmer in certain things. I'm not necessarily, I don't do it. I'm just saying so machmer in certain things and other things which seem to be uh, totally inconvenient. So um, we don't do it. By the way, it's not so um, crazy because if, let's say now, Shki, I'm just saying, let's say Shki is at uh, in what? Five. Tomorrow night will be six, five? Five fifty seven last night. So it's gonna be five, it's gonna be four fifty seven, right? Yeah. So four fifty seven, so to sleep before to go to sleep at, at night, because there's no lights, which is what, what they used to do. You don't bar, you go to sleep. So you don't bar, so maybe they went to sleep twenty minutes after ski or whatever they did, whatever they waited for. Maybe the went to sleep late. He was a, a late owl, he went to sleep at seven. <laughs> so, and then you get up a chatzai, so you get your five, six hours. That's, uh, that's the schedule of a Jew. That's what Shulchanarach says. That, that was the schedule of a Jew. The, the, the Beis Yosef himself did that. He writes, the, the Beis Yosef himself did that. That's what he did. And the whole Tzvast did that. So it's not a, hmm. that's, that's a Jewish schedule. It just doesn't work with our work schedules and everything else. But, uh, and then he davened that. So you go, you know, do whatever you do. You know, take a nap, you take a nap. Or, you know, but, but you got your five, six hours in. So it's not so crazy, but it doesn't work. So we don't, we don't do it. So, um, but there's this Indian of getting up at Chatzois. Well, then Emar, and on this the pasuk says, "B'shach b'chatishmar alecha, oh minachitzayin." Exactly what I was saying. When you're sleeping, Hashem watches you from the chitzayin. You're in a danger field. You're like, you know, could imagine, like, loyalenu, uh, um, like if somebody's having a heart uh, transplant or something. So, uh, you know, they, you know, you, you, the guys at the table, they're bar, they're bartiv him. They take his heart out, put it on the table, work on it, and put it back. <laughs> He's a, a, so, so you're in a makom sakona, obviously. Like every second, there's a makom sakona. I'm, I'm sitting here without a heart. I got machines, and machines, but uh, I don't have, I don't have a heart. So Kal Chomer, you know, some takes a neshama out and 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 uh, works with the neshama on the table. <laughs> the neshama's on the table, so you need a big shmira from a kodesh baruch Hu while you're sleeping. Vakitzaisi, he to sichecha. So now you wake up. He to zichecha, and you learn Torah. Biskasheri my, I just want to read the words, and I want to go into this a little bit and explain. Biskasheri my v'hui ma, your miskasher im my, v'tiskasher, and the Torah you learn is is tiskasher im my, your makasher with it v'hu im ma, and you with the Torah, meaning you become one with the limud Torah that's going on at twelve thirty at night. And now your neshama goes up to Gan Eden. Not talking about while you're sleeping. Talk about while you're awake. Your neshama goes up to Gan Eden. And now I'm, I'm like holding at one o'clock in the morning. I'm learning Torah. If I'm learning Torah, so now I'm holding. I'm not, like I'm not watching the news on the internet. I'm, I'm learning Torah. So if I'm learning Torah. So, so now my, my, I'm part of the same thing as like the tzaddikim that are in God Eden. And the hatiferis yavai sham gam hu lish tashayim tzaddikim v'imay b'chavrasa. So there, unbeknownst to us, we're in the same place as the tzaddikim that are in God Eden. But shekulam makshivan l'koyla, he's learning the Pasuk, but they're all listening to me. In other words, I'm the balabas over here at this time. So think about it, says the Torah Dvar, that when a person, passes away from this world, so he's going from the world of Gashvius, going through the process of Misa, and which none of us have experienced, going through the process of Misa, and then going into a new world, right? Misa's over. Yeah. Now, you're, now you're going into a new world. So that's the same thing here. You go to sleep. You go through the process of a, of, a, of a mini misa, and then when you wake up and you learn Torah, you're in Gan Eden. The, ne- the next step is you're in Gan Eden. So so here you are, 
you know, you know, zachisi, you know, just uh, a little bit zachisi, that, uh, you know, when, when I first came to a yeshiva here in Eretz Yisrael, so uh, I, was, I was only 14 years old in a few months when I, when I, when I came. And uh, I, I was, uh, I had a sister in Madrasdorf. Um, I have a sister, but that time she was in Madrasdorf. She lived in Madrasdorf, so um, in the morning, she, what, what are you going to do? Where are you going to learn? So I, I went to Rav Scheinberg. I never saw him, never even heard of him. Um, and I, w- I went to see him, and I said to him, I'd like to come learn in the yeshiva. So, just to be, how old are you? You're still wearing, this is his words, you're still wearing boys' size clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so, which was true, I don't know how he did that. But <laughs> he says, and then he said, your beard doesn't even grow yet. Like, I was too young to, to, to shave. Like, you're, so I said, I'm 14. So, uh, so my birthday was April, this was in December, actually. So, so uh, 14 and a half. So he said, the next person, uh, age older than you, is, uh, is 18. You know, that's, that's quite a, you know, like you're going to learn, who you're going to learn with it. Then he says, who, who's going to take care of you? You know, you're a kid, somebody has to take care of you. And then he thought for a minute, uh, I remember this, like, I'm standing there, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. And, uh, and the, uh, he says, okay, I'll take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he said, you're too young to go in the dormitory. So he said, you could stay in my house. Um, couldn't stay in my sister's house because they were leaving for a sorry, it's a day or two later. So uh, stay in my house. So I stayed in his house. That's where, that's where I lived, in, uh, at his house. Um, and for a while, or a few months, I, I, I lived there. And then I guess he deemed me mature enough, or he got tired of me. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I went to the... Uh, to the panemia, but uh, at th- that time, so um, you know, I mean, can you imagine a kid staying in, in the big like Rosh Hashiva's house? Of the, and uh, so I, I saw the Hanhaga that at not not at Chatzais, but um, <coughs> at, at four o'clock in the morning, he got up to learn every every single morning, and he asked me if I can also get up, <laughs> if I can also get up to help him put out his uh, tzitzis. Like, uh, so sure. So, so I got up at four o'clock in the morning. It was like there were a lot of, a lot of tzitzis he wore, so I helped him put on his tzitzis. And then uh, he, he would learn until Nets, and then Nets he would uh, dab in Shmer Nesra, there'd be Yechidus, and then he would learn more, sometimes another hour or something, and then he would go to the yeshiva for Chazar Sashats and finish uh, Shafras there. So that, that was the Seder at Bar. So t- what, why do I tell you this story? Because I, I saw something that for years I've been trying to. Um, it, um, you know, he was he was a he was a god like that. But, uh, that when you when you watched him at four thirty in the morning, learning with his cup of coffee and seven eight swarm piled up and the tzitzis, um, you you it w- it was about much like watching a melech. I, I, it's it's a hard thing to to even explain, uh, but there was a certain like or literally an or. <laughs> That, 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 that came from him. And I found out later that, you know, as I got older, that the Stipler had the Seder Hayyim, and the Chazanish had the Seder Hayyim, and Rabbi Feinstein had the So this was the normal Seder Hayyim, for whatever reason, uh, um, of, of the uh, of the Gedolim, that they, they got up um, very early, and it was very quiet, and nothing, you know, the, there was no, you know, all the machines we have didn't exist. He just had a telephone, and it didn't, it didn't ring at that moment at that time. And it was just like learning Torah, just learning Torah, this, this uh, Kedusha that came about. So when, so when I read this, um, the, the, uh, Tiferis, there's a Tiferis there. And the Tiferis is that he's with the Tzadikim Shekulam Akshivan L'Koyloi. And his coil, meaning his coil Torah, um, is, is heard by all the Malachim and Shemayim. Here he's traveled from Misa and Shena. And now he's tied up to Gan Eden. The only difference, what's it, I mean, so Gan Eden, it's not a place. <laughs> right? <laughs> not a place. There's no, like, a, you, know, you can't uh, put, put Gan Eden to Waze or Google Maps or something. Like, it's not a place. It's a phenomenon. So, of a nixer beside Gan Eden, the Hischalis Noitzetel of Arhatiferes, and he begins to attract 
or at least night takes a love. How do we, how do we try? Starts to sprout from him. Or hati faras. Hamis night takes began Aiden. Now the same thing you see in Gan Aiden. That's what you're going to see here. So I think I saw. I think. I think. Chaim perish in Parshas Truma. That's what the Zayar says in Parshas Truma. So that's that's what. Um, now the Gemara says. Just to be my eyeing into this a little bit. Again, I don't know why we don't get up at Chatzais. I don't know why Gedolim didn't get up at Chatzais because the, because we have electricity. So you can't end your day at six o'clock. So it's pushed a little bit. But um, you went to sleep by the way at, at midnight. Uh, like, <laughs> that was, I mean, right, like, like a machine, went to sleep at midnight. And, and you look like the, the Hanhagas of Davin Amelech, like in his last 10, 10, 15 years of his life. I'm not saying you're asking for Rosh I'm just saying what I saw. The last 10, 10, 15 years of his life, I think he, he never went into a bed. <laughs> Uh, like it was just on just on Shabbos Friday night, I was like always just just in his own chair and, and learning, and so it means like the default status was just Tyra, but but midnight fell asleep in his chair. I was very old. He was always well, he was, he was old, 102, 103. But uh, it was a hanhag of tzaddikim. It's something even if he can't be a tzaddik, at least to see it. <laughs> it's something special to see. Yeah. He sleeps 160 on Misa, so there's also the side that person goes to. Tzadik was on Hava, 160. Yeah. So why is it that when he wakes, even when he's sleeping, he should be like... Able to so the Misa is the transition point between Chaim and, and, and Olam Hava. Misa in between. So the Misa itself, Misa could be Kasha. Misa, like, like you know, the Gevar, you see, they daven for an easy passing. But, that, but you're not yet into, boom, into the new world. <laughs> so the new world... Is after you wake up, right? So uh, it's after after you wake after the tzaddikim go through visa, real visa, so that they wake up into this world of Olam Haba. So let, let me let me just the Gemara says as follows. Uh, everyone knows this Gemara. The Gemara says that I presume that's the Bukhar for this that David Amelech went to sleep. Where's the Gemara Brachos Gimel? Gemara says, Amar of Shimon Chasida, which might be Rav Shimon Bar Yechai, but Amar of Shimon Chasida, Kinar Hayatolui Lamalam and Mitase Shal David. The Kivan she right there was a harp over his bed. The Kivan she Higia Chatzais Halayla, and once Chatzais came, Baruch Tzvaynus, a northern wind came, the Hayamanagi, and the Hayamanagi Meilav, and the Kinar used to uh, go off. Yad made Vaisek Batira. And immediately he would get up and be Osek and Tyra. It's interesting. He didn't uh, even though it says Khatsai Slay Lakum Lahoy Slacha. So you would think he would have he was saying Davening, or you would think um, you know uh Tikun Khatsais. Tikun Khatsais, but uh, he was learning Tyra. But probably maybe that's where the Zayar has the Diyuk that you your Mavaras Birchhoisov. Uh, that you say brachos first because you have to, the first thing you have to do is give hoidah to Hakadosh Baruch. And then kibbutz Allah amuda shachar, kibbutz Allah amuda shachar. Once the amuda shachar would happen a few hours later, nichnasu chachme Yisrael at slave imrim loy. So the chachme Yisrael would be lined up outside of his uh, door, and they would say adrenenu amela chamchi Yisrael truth and parnasa. So the way we learn the gemara normally is the workday begins. At, uh, work day for a melech. He got up at Chatzai, He went to sleep at Shkia. His sleeping, the Gemara says, was Kishenes Hasus. Kishenes Hasus, Shish and uh, A horse, a horse can sleep standing up. Did you know that? Hmm? They can be walking to sleep. Right. But sometimes they lay down also, horses. But as I just, uh, I was. What's my eye into the sweetie task like uh, Rabbi Slifkin or something? <laughs> Sleeping patterns of horses. But um, but David Amelech um, was was went to sleep like a horse. So that means like you know like I'm saying like maybe maybe he didn't even get into a bed except it says here it was Lamalam and Mitasa. But he he was like sleeping and not asleep. Shenas Hasus. How long is uh, Shisim Nishman? 
So, but um, Machlekes, again, Reb Tzadik says, um, in, in um, Reb Tzadik writes that she's an Ishman means uh, six hours. That doesn't mean 20 minutes, it means six hours. But, but apparently never got into this uh, REM sleep. You know, never, he was fighting sleep. David HaMalach was fighting sleep. But that was until Chatzais. Chatzais, the, the harp went off, um, and, and he woke up and he, and he learned Torah every single night. And then at Amud HaShachar, so the Chachma Yisrael said, we need Parnassah. Chachma Yisrael came and said, Amcha Yisrael, Tzrichim Parnassah. So it's an interesting uh, Seder Hayyad. One wonders um, when the harp went off, what did it, what, what did it play? Definitely one of your. Shir Shal Yom. So it must have been a Carl Bunch. <laughs> like, what, what, what did it. Uh, I don't know, the, the mind wonders. Like, what was it? Just a random strumming or something? But, but more interestingly, there, uh, a Machlaikis, what, how this worked, this harp, it's uh, sort of here on the side, he brings a Machlaikis to shine him. Whether the pshat is the pshat that the um, is it the pshat that the harp was um, woke him up like an alarm clock wakes you up so this was his natural alarm clock that worked with the rough spiness or is it the pshat that the alarm that it just told him that it's chatzais like how did he how did he know that it was chatzais halay what did you have a watch. Sundial doesn't work well in the middle of night. Don't forget that the uh, the, that the ruach uh, uh, tzvonas is a malach. Could you say so, so? So did the malach wake him up? Which is about like this. It's interesting about like this. Did it, did, it, did it wake him up, or did it or did it just tell him what time it was? So, there, is, there is a difference in the night. Unfortunately, I mean, so many things that up. in the night. <laughs> there is there's some point in the night where it changes. There's a change in the Change the temperature and everything. Ruach Zoinus. It's a it's a northern wind. So um, and he was up already. So I'm saying he was up up, not up. You know, like like me waiting for the alarm clock to go off. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <coughs> what happens when you get older? Give me another five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I could wait for like 45 minutes for the alarm clock to go off, and then it goes off, and I put on snooze. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is this up? All right, but so I, I, I'm just trying to. I was trying to be Bonain into the uh, Seder Hayom of David Hamelach, and I'm trying to figure out what is exactly the Milo of getting up at Chatzos Halayla. Like, why is that? Like, why is that better than getting up at seven in the morning and catching a minion? Why? Wh why is it? Why is it a Milo? Uh, what, what is the Milo? So I saw. I'll get back to David Hamelach in a second. Put it in my. Super deluxe timer Jvara. So he brings, this is by the way a fantastic thing that this person did, a guy in England. Um, he collected um, from the Ramak, who wrote many, many swear, from the Ramak in all different places wherever he talks about this sugya. Because here mm -hmm. Tamar it's really, uh, Tamar is just a section of a big safer of the, uh, of the Ramak. But he, he, this is just really like a kitzer, it's hard to understand until you get into all the other things that he says. So he, he says here, Kasav Rabbeinu b'Sifrei or Yakar. I was very uh, moved by this. It's the Sefer from the Ramak or Yakar on the Parsha. This is on Parsha's Vayishlach. And the title of the essay that the Ramak writes, and this is something that we should know, this is a beginning, is called Hisairis HaTachtoinim. Like, what are the term? Hisairis HaTachtoinim. Hisairus hatachtoinim chashiv yoiser v'yoiser mikol hisairus hatzadikim shemaganeda. Is there a man? Hisairus hatachtoinim, the awakening of, I guess we are the tachtoinim. So hisairus hatachtoinim is more chashiv mikol hisairus hatzadikim shemagan. I guess I go to sleep in ganeda also, um, but but they wake up. It's not as chashiv as when we wake up. This that tzaddikim and Gan Eden wake up. Same Kamalochim. 
there's no battle. <coughs> you see, like one of the one of the most difficult um, battles of the human being is getting up. Is it true? Like because the nefesh, nafshi ka'afar, we call tia, the 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 bechina of afar, is the betzias of afar is that you throw it up and it falls down again until there's ruach. So, so the, the ruach has to come and animate the offer. So until that happens, like, you know, uh, the neshama, you know, just starts to, to enter. We have some nefesh, ruach, neshama. Like, that's the getting up process. And that's a natural, um, it's a natural thing. But when we're sleeping, we're nefesh. Nefesh is offer. Nafshi, ka offer. The And it's, a, it's, it's natural um, tendency is just to fall back down to the ground, you know. Snooze. So that's that's what's natural. So that's called, interestingly, Yetzirah. Uh, um, they're not getting up in the morning. So tzaddik in Gan Eden doesn't have that issue. Um, just gets up. Time to get up. You get up. <laughs> doesn't have a nefesh. So if you don't have a nefesh, you don't have a bechina of afar. So there's no nafshi for the koltia. So it comes time to get up. Just get up. It's a, it's um. Where are they getting up from? Yeah, why do they need to sleep? What are they sleeping for? There's no time. To, what's, what's or what do they need to re-energize for? So Vashma, their neshamas also have a din. Like, you see, you see that, um, that uh, Mesim also have dinim. That's what a yard site is. And they say Kaddish. Because neshamas also have dinim. So uh, I guess, Lishene Afar. Lishene Afar. And maybe they're hoping one day they're going to wake up and it's going to be Tchiyas HaMesim. <laughs> in a different world, something's different. I don't know. How do we know? Nobody knows. But um, the, even this little giloy here is um, in the Ramak is telling us things that who you know who would know this. But he says that again. Let me get, let me get to the point here. The tzaddikim that wake up, um, it's not like somebody who, I presume he means, is fighting the eight Sahara to get out. Shehem kemalach. Once you're in Shemayim, you're like a malach. Same, same type of thing as a malach. A little different, but the same thing. Abnam, he sayers hatachtain. Remember the term? He sayers hatachtain. He sayers hatachtain. He, he sayers hamatsuyim v'oisim, hamatsuvim rather, v'oisim v'yeshbam yeh Sahara. So this is, this, um, to me, was, wow, a wonderful giveaway. Because the Gemara says, um, and we repeat often, Godel ha-metzuva v'aisa, m'shena metzuva v'aisa. So, Godel ha-metzuva v'aisa, greater is he that is commanded and does a mitzvah than a volunteer. Which is a pellet, like, uh, you know, if you're getting paid to do your job, that's your job. Like, you don't get any great covet for doing your job. If you're a volunteer, then you give a person, I'm not doing it for money, I'm not doing it for money. But um, Rashi says, Allah Bako, in Shabbos, um, so Rashi says that the Pshat is because, um, you know, if you want to really get something done, so don't get volunteers, pay somebody. I mean, it, like, we know this, we, we in this business know that, uh, that, that volunteers are, you know, you get what you pay for sometimes. I mean, there are volunteers that are, but, that are gewaldic, but whatever gewaldic it is, it's not the same as a person you know, good person going to work at nine and working till five, getting the job done. This was a job, right? So that's what Rashi says. Got a lot of supervisor, machine of supervisor. That um, that's better. Get um, a supervisor is better than a volunteer. The 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 Zayar is a different connection to Rashi, and and this, he brings us from the Zayar that hamet supervisor yesh b'hem yitzharah. That what's happening is if if you what is the pshat in mitzvahim v'oisim? It's not natural for me to do this mitzvah right now. It's not something. It's it's not something like just natural for me. So it means that there's resistance. So the resistance is let's call that resistance yetsahara. Um, and, and the yetsahara is telling me don't do it. Don't get up in the morning. But there's a whole day here. You know, let's we'll face the challenges. Besides, it's hard to get up. Face the challenges of the day and the do. You know. All the, all the things that are going to go on, those things like this. As soon as it starts going through your mind, you, you put the covers over here. So, um, so, and then you get up. So that's called Hamatsuba Vaisa. You hear that? It's a Matsuba Vaisa. 
because the fact that you need some kind of a tzivoy is not natural to me. I'm not a volunteer, it's not just natural to me, I just get up. But the, the, I'm going connected by nature to, to get up. Connected your nature means connected your yetzahara. That's much more um, valuable. Why? Because when you go connected your yetzahara, that's called hisoyerus hatachtoinim. Kumari. Hisoyerus hatachtoinim. Let's get to the area in a minute. So, um, Do you hear this? This is a, um, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing uh, chiddush that the pshat and gadol hamitzuvah vaisa mishenu mitzuvah vaisa that the reason why um, the the mitzuvah vaisa, if it's your job, it's more important than 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 a volunteer is that a volunteer is not actually I'd like to volunteer for this organization I'd like to you know I'd like to help but a mitzuvah vaisa is that's my job and what does that mean I'm doing it even though I don't want to do it so when you do something even though you don't want to do it so that's called Hisoyerus hatachtoinim. Getting up at chatzoy salayla is hisoyerus hatachtoinim. <laughs> when you wake up, and that's what David Abel says, if you go further than bar, that I'm not like the kings of the world that wake up at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock. Having breakfast. Yeah, I mean, in other words, they get up. They get up when they wake up. They're not getting up, they're, 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 they're waking up. He says, not me, but chatzoy salayla akum lohoi deslacha. I'm not waking up, I'm getting up. I'm, 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 there's an avoider here in the getting up. Because learning Torah is part of the Hadam. That's what our purpose is to kind of learn the Torah and to do that. That's, the, that's right. That's, the, that's part of the Hadam. So, so, the very, so I guess we shouldn't think to ourselves that Dabra Belach was just a natural ins- insomniac, you know, getting up at midnight. Like, but the pshat is this was his avoda, and the avoda was called the name of the avoda was his Very important. Maybe it's because it's the second half of the malchus. Because it's the second half of the malchus. Very good. You're 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 good. Vehi says the ramak avoda chashuva. It's a tremendous his ayrus hatachtoinim. New thing. Uh, uh, talk about his ayrus hatachtoinim. Avoid a chashuva he shehi misayreres. It doesn't have to be at midnight. Sometimes you know, like his ayrus dachtoinim take place right here in the middle of the shear. His ayrus dachtoinim. Right. I used to think sometimes that uh, when I was. Um, Speaking that I was being over the Gazel Shaina. That I once said that in my show of months, I said, Sometimes I feel like when I'm speaking, I'm being over Gazel Shaina. So somebody from the uh, congregation said, No, 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 it's not a problem. On <laughs> 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 the contrary. On the contrary. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, he says, He avoid a chashuva, shehimi soireris, mi oilam. These words are powerful. What's going on in this world is the world. So that puts us in a place which is higher than the Malachim. And nevertheless, I'm being miskaber, koivesh, as you try, miskaber on the chitsoinim, a miskaber on them. I go against my nature. What happens when you do that? I'm being Moshe Shefa, what I'm doing is I'm changing the whole world now. And that's why in Shemayim, everybody, all the Malachim listen and all the, everything, all the base, everybody, they have to listen to me now because now I did a Hisoyerus HaTachtoinim act. And now I'm able to, to um, have tremendous uh, power in the Shemayim. He doesn't say this, but I want to say that that's why Immediately, we learn normally that Alois HaShachar, all the Chachmei Yisrael came to Dabin HaMelech, and they said, Klai Yisrael Tzrichem Parnasa. Workday begins, right? 445, workday begins. No, could be the Pshad is that, that they came to him because Dabin HaMelech, at this moment, by Amud HaShachar, right? let, let Amud HaShachar, let him have a cup of coffee, let him talk, and whatever he's going to do. But no, in Amud HaShachar, they realized, the Chachmei Yisrael realized, the David Amelech right now is in a position of being able to ch- switch over to whole Shemayim and Oretz. He's able to change the whole world. So since he's able to change the whole world, they came and said, okay, give us a bracha for Pardosa, give us an Eitzah for Pardosa. He was, he, 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 was at a, he was at a certain madrega there. 
which, which they couldn't find him any other time. Why? Because he just fulfilled the avoida of his Hisoyeris Hatachtoinim. What, what did he say to them? He said something like, go to war. Go to war. go to war. Yeah. I, I just want to, before we end, if you just give me another two minutes. Um, the, the, um, the Ramchal, if I remember this, in Das Tfunais. So the Ramchal talks about To'elas Hara. That's the that's the uh, the chapter head. To'elas Hara. What's good about bad? And um, he gives three things that are. Um, this is in page Osimin Kuf Chavdalat of the Das Tfunais. So he says that one of the the third thing that he says that's good about bad is Od Shehu Goyrem Revach LaAdam Atzmoi Hamisnaseboi. Um, it gives a bad gives a person a chance to be good. If, if, if there wouldn't be any bad, then we would have no uh, no chance to be good. And then he says the Ramchal says kemoshel hazayna im ben hamelach, like the mashal of the zayna with the ben hamelach shedar shul chazal, and in the parentheses. Um, Rav Chaim Friedland, the one who put this out, says, Brach Islam of Bey um, the, the What's the mushal of the Zoyna and Brach Islam of Bey I'll just tell you a little stupid. Over there, the, Gbar, the only Gemara that speaks about a mushal of a Zoyna and Brach Islam of Bey is the Gemara there is talking about the Egel. And Moshe Rabbeinu claimed to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that why, like, why are you blaming Klai Yisrael for making an eagle? You gave them all this gold and stuff in, in, uh, in Mitzrayim, and when you give somebody gold, um, they're they in a danger it. place, right? They're in danger zone when you give them gold. So Moshe Rabbeinu said, it's your fault, not Klai Yisrael's fault. Um, and, he, and he quoted many psukim, uh, he quoted him so many times, by Ishman, he's Yishur and Vayivat. But he psukim, the Gemara says that, that, um, that when you have gold, you're in danger. Then the Gemara says, Mashal um, Lamelech, famous Gemara, Mashal Lamelech, um, that had a son, and he feeds the son everything the kid wants to eat, and, he, and he, uh, the kid is Balei Kresai, and he's, got all, he's completely spoiled, and then you dress him up real fancy, and you put uh, perfume on him, and you put him in front of the uh, base Haznus, so ma yase haben shelo yechte. Like, what do you want from the bench shelo yechte? So Moshe Rabbeinu said that this is the matzav of Klai Yisrael. Ma yase haben shelo yechte. I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm saying, what did the Ramchal bring? What, what does he want from? What, what does he want from this uh, this Gemara? What does it have to do with the godless of Ra? Moshe Rabbeinu was excusing the Ra by saying, look, he gave them all this money. So why, why are you doing it? Then um, I, I saw that this. Anyway, this, this edition of the Ramchal, which was put out by Rabbi Freeland, I bought in Tashin Lam and Gimel, um, when Reb, I think Lam and Gimel, when Rabbi Chaim Freeland, Moshe Yezabonovich, came to the yeshiva and he was selling his books. <laughs> so, so I bought that. But I, I, um, I looked at a later edition, which is the same thing, exactly the same thing, it's still page Kodala, and there in parentheses, instead of saying Brach is Lam and Beis, it says Ayin Zoyar Truma, Kufsam and Gimel and Al. He changed, somebody changed. This uh, parentheses to the Zayar. The Zayar is is a whole is a different story. So I looked up the Zayar. That's and it says here. Um, some parshas true makuf samach gimel amid aleph. Here, this uh, the mushal is to a. Um, is it the beginning over here? That, that a, a king, I'll go to Hosea, there was a Melech, which there, there was no Melech in the Gemara. The, a Melech um, says to his son that if you want to be the prince, you want to take over this Malchus, you have to be a strong person, and I want you to stay away from bad women. Like, that's just stay away from bad women. And the son said, okay. Um, and then the, the Melech wanted to test the, the son to see whether he's really uh, disciplined and he's really listening to him. And there was um, a certain zoyna that was, here, hine, beves ha-melech mi bachutz, I'm reading the first Hebrew, ha-ya zoyna achas yifas marav yifas tayr, that outside of the palace was hanging around this um, zoyna, beautiful, beautiful zoyna. 
um, and when uh, days later, Amar Amelech, and he writes a lyrics with Soin Bani Eli. I want to see the faithfulness of my son. So what did he do? Kara Amelech Lezayna. The Melech called the Zayna. The Amar La Lechiva Tefati as Bani. Try to seduce my son. I want to see what's going to happen. It's different than the Gemara, right? Different. Kedei Lurais as Ritzayna Shel Bani Eli. Because I want to see uh, the faithfulness of my son. Ma Asasa Zayna He. What did the Zayna do? Hol Chach Rei Bani The son went out and she followed the son. And she grabbed him, and she hugged him, and she tried to seduce him in every different way. Um, to see if the son would be able to, this is similar to the Gemara in Brachas, what was the king doing, but it's a little bit of a different story here. Says the, says the Zayar, if, he, if he's up, oh, who Goyerba, what happens is that he screamed at her, and he pushed her away. So the father, the king, was happy with his son. And he led him into the inner chambers of the palace. So this is the punchline. Says the Zayar, Man Gorim what brought all this covet to the son? Right? Havi Ema he The Zaina gets the prize. <laughs> the Zona was the one that, that brought Godless to the Ben Hamela. Mm-hmm. So we give her a testimonial right. dinner. <laughs> Here's your Zona plaque. And you know, because the, 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 it was the Zona that brought him. So this um, it, it says the Ramak, and he even explains it over here at the bottom, Rabbi Frisk first, that um, that this is the Hisarius Hatachtoinu. Uh, so the what? Toela Sarah. Yeah, the Toela Sarah. This is what the, this is. This makes sense. What the what the Ramchal is bringing the Toela Sarah. The Toela Sarah is because it's if if the son would have never had this fight with the it's a marshal. It's all, if the son would have never had this fight with the Eight Sahara, Eight Sahara, the Nimshal is the is, this world is called the Zaina. So uh, all the things that pull us in this world, if he would have never had this fight, he would have never been promoted to princehood. So his his medal was earned by 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 having this fight with the Ra. And the Ra, so this is a big big law Shahima, he's Zaina. She was going to the whole thing. So the shot is that that um, getting up at at uh Chatsois Halaila is that's the Hisoyurus Hatachtoin. Uh, that's that's where you're you're fighting to get up and not the natural time to get up, and that's where the Kedusha um, comes in, and that's where we control the whole um, the whole Shemayim Baaretz, and that's why the Gedolim Chachmei Yisrael came to him right after that. They saw this is a tzaddik that can that can give a bracha to, on, on, on the highest level. Isn't that true with any test of temptation that we have? Exactly true. Yeah. Doesn't have to be getting Doesn't up. Doesn't have to be getting up. Correct. What time, what time did they come to him? In the Why did he resist? Which is which is Midas Netzach and Hoy. Why did he resist? So the reason he resisted sleep was because he was the chicken for Adam Arishan. Adam Arishan gave him 70 years, right? So Adam Arishan was Geyser Misa to the world. And David Mount Israel, Chai Bekaya. He wasn't, he didn't want to be telling Tom Misa. Wow. That's strange because he's, he's Malchus, right? Right. And sleep is Malchus, sleep but is he mouth. resisted the Malchus of sleep. But, but uh, yes. But David Melch Yisrael Chai Bekaim in two ways he resisted me. So one is that the, pro- the progeny of, uh, of David Melch was Malchus was Mashiach, Tchias Hamesim, and uh, lives on forever. Chai Bekaim, David Melch. And then in his own life he resisted sleep because he was using borrowed time. From from uh, he was trying to be a battle the Kilkel of uh, Adam Harishin who brought me into the world. Uh, Those are different. Uh, why would they have to come to him every day for brachah? Why not? How often do you have to go for a broken? This kach of was so strong, so then... Right. Fine, I know, because every day is a new din. Uh-huh. I always wonder, like, if you get a broken from a you have to go again six months later, twelve months later, like, how often do you need a, do you need a renewal slip on that? Yeah. How was the month of death again? And death what, what, what? The relationship between the death, death and the 
Uh, death is a passive place. Right. Place they make or make quote. Okay. That's what my office is. Okay. 